guys. Um, Jill here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about herbal birth control. Um, every time I bring it up, people are like, does it work? Oh my goodness, you know, what, what, how does it work and stuff. So I just figured I'd make a video about it. Um, I chose today because my birth control tincture that I'm making um, is ready today. It's been six weeks since I, since I started it, and so I'm going to walk through the steps and tell you a little bit about it, okay? Um, I, th this method is Queen Anne's Lace, and I made a post about it on Facebook. I was like, hey, did you guys know you can use Queen Anne's Lace as birth control? And everyone's like, oh, be careful, be careful, water hemlock. And that's true. Okay, so there are many plants that look like Queen Anne's Lace. If you live in the south or a deciduous area or, or anyone out of the country, I don't know where else it grows. But, um, but yeah, here in Arkansas in the south, we definitely have an abundance of it but this year we had a pretty dry summer and an early growing season like a month ago all these all these queen ants started turning brown i thought i'd have more time to gather more but i actually started in about june so um so i, I have some i've been taking just the seeds um queen ants lace so let me just start there queen ants lace is recognize it it's like a white umbral flower a bunch of them real close together kind of folded up um, water hemlock does look a lot like this, but the, the, the white flowers are, are more spread out for one and two, they grow on a single stalk with little, little leaves. Um, Queen Anne's Lace is much different. You'll see a bunch of them in one area, tight little flowers that are all really close together in one kind of flower head. Um, but what you want most of all is the seeds. The seeds for water hemlock, fennel, all the things are, are different than than the ones for Queen Anne's Lace. You'll see all these white flowers everywhere. It's big, like you, you can't miss it. It's a big, like they'll be in a big field basically. And the seeds are just like folded up little pods. So, um, but if you are planning on harvesting this yourself, please go and make sure you have all the ways to identify this plant. Um, one difference between water hemlock and Queen Anne's Lace, you'll know it's Queen Anne if her stem is hairy, a little hairy, she has hairy legs. So if you can remember that, you'll be pretty much okay. But you should really get to know Queen Anne if you are unsure, because water hemlock is poisonous. So yeah, you won't get pregnant, but you also won't be living. So well, anyway, so what you want is the seeds. Okay, you can you don't have to make a tincture like I did. You can just chew about a tablespoon or a tablespoon, a teaspoon. Sorry, one teaspoon of seeds like this. Um, and the seeds are really, really cool looking. Let's see if I can't hold them up. Man, um, they're like really fluffy. They just, they just look like little, little kind of like sticker birds. I don't know. It's not focusing, but and they have such a unique taste. Like I, I don't even know how to describe it. So I'm gonna, gonna see. They're like, they're, I want to say spicy, but they're not spicy like a pepper. They're like, yeah, kick to them. Like a, you can taste it. Like it honestly reminds me of pine salt. Like, when I smell that, you know, taste like the wood, I guess, I don't know. But they're not unpleasant. You know, if you do decide to go the seed route, you know, it's, it's not unpleasant. Um, okay, so before, before I go into um, how to uh, take them, or, or the difference in how to make them and everything, I'm going to tell you how to take them. So, um... Queen Anne's Lace is non-hormonal, like most birth controls, you know, it doesn't doesn't have any fake hormones in it. Instead, um, the seeds contain an active constituent that basically make your uterus slippery. So around the time of ovulation and everything, um, you, you know, you, that's the only time you can conceive. So this makes your uterus like slippery so that implantation cannot occur. It also works by blocking important progesterone, which is necessary for a healthy pregnancy to continue. So if you catch it early on enough, if, if you're already pregnant, this will not work. If it's already implanted, you've already got a pregnancy test, this will not work. Um, there are methods for that. It's controversial. Um, if you'd like to talk about them, I can send you some links. I have my own methods. Um, depending on where you're at, may or may not work. But anyway, um, Queen Anne's Lace Seed, either the seed or the tincture, either a teaspoon of the seeds or three drops of tincture within eight hours after fertilizing sex. So, you know, unprotected, that does a thing within eight hours. Say it was at night, it's all right. 
if you wake up the next morning and take it with breakfast. Um, the tincture especially, I make this out of Everclear, which burns, burns, burns the tongue when it's in full strength, which this is not. This is only 75%, which full Everclear is 95%, so it's diluted a little bit. Um, let me show you. I use this brand. Um, Gem Clear, that's what we got at our, our local uh, liquor store right across the street. And this is my diluted. This is 16 ounces of Everclear and 8 ounces of water, distilled water. So so this is like a two-thirds ratio, you know, 60-70%. Um, so yeah, that's what I use to make this. Um, you you can use, when, when making tinctures, tinctures are always alcohol-based. If you use vegetable, this one is called a glyceride. So when using tinctures, especially full strength, you use full strength for the more resinous things like weed. <laughs> weed tincture is made out of full strength Everclear, which is then usually diluted and then added with honey or vegetable glycerin because the taste, man, I made a tincture, my very first tincture, and I'm like, oh, you ready to try my tincture? And they're like, all right, put it on your tongue. And it was like, ah, it was burning. So, so yeah, we learned pretty quickly. Um, but like I said, you can you can either the next morning um, you take a teaspoon of seeds or three drops. I do not recommend it putting it on your tongue. So putting in orange juice to kind of mask the alcoholic flavor or a full glass of water. Um, but yeah, so you take it within eight hours of your first after sex. Um, the sooner the better, really. I mean, if you take it right after, if you're really you're close around your ovulation time, you know, something like that. Um, the earlier the better. Then 24 hours later, you take another dose. And then 24 hours later, you take another dose. Um, there's been some studies done. And all of the women who took it correctly did not get pregnant. But the ones who kind of let up and kind of missed a dose or whatever, yeah, they ended up pregnant. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they tested for a whole year. I'll put the link to that research in the comments. Um, but yeah, that's it. I mean, like, if you're having sex every day, then yeah, you take it. Well, after ovulation, you can't technically get pregnant. So if you're up on your cycle and everything, then you can know that after ovulation, you know, I'd, I'd wait like two, three days, you know, either still take it or be careful. And then after that, you should be fine. Um, but yeah, so if you're having sex every day of the, you know, month, then you need to be taking this every day until a couple days after ovulation occurs. Um, yeah, anyway, so I plucked these seeds. And I always, always, always label my bottles. That way I know when I started the tincture. That way I know when to, you know, do what I'm about to do, strain it and everything. Um, and what I used with it. Um, for, for lesser tinctures, like if you wanted to make like a lavender tincture or something, um, then you can use 40%, you know, like your regular vodka or whiskey or anything like that. Um, vodka is usually a better choice because it's clear, you know, whatever. Um, um, but yeah, you can use whatever you want, whatever you're flavor and some people don't like alcohol they have liver issues whatever so that's where glycerin comes in handy you can actually evaporate the tincture off of certain you know resins and whatnot um and then add honey or glycerin to it but you it's, it's, it's a tricky process <laughs> um not tricky just time consuming and you really got to watch it and because if you boil all the evaporated or evaporate all the alcohol off of it then you'll just be left with this like like basically resin like this hash or whatever or whatever plant you're making and uh then it, it can be hard to kind of evenly distribute that through all of the all of the glycerin or the honey that you're making later or putting back into it sorry it's, it's been a long day if you hear my son he's teething right now he's yeah um anyway so yeah here it is it's i started this on july 18th and so that was Almost exactly, I think, six weeks ago. And I've actually had a lot of people ask me about it, so I'm going to, yeah, Queen Anne's is what I got for you. And so now I'm going to show you pretty much my step-by-step -step how I'm going to do it. Um, so I've got this just to, just to kind of put it into. And then I've got cheesecloth. Since these seeds are so big, um, they, they it doesn't even really need to be doubled up like this. They won't fit through. So... So you see what I did there? I took cheesecloth, put it on, and then kind of poked it down in so that it creates like a, you know, like a little strainer. Whatever. And then I'm just gonna open my tincture. And 
pour it in. Ooh, nice green color. I don't even think those seeds are going to come out. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. This was, I started this tincture before I had more of these glass jars. And so, so my seeds are wanting to come out, but I'm going to need them out because they are full, 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 full of goodness. So let's see, what can I use to get this out? I'm going to use this. I'm going to use a paintbrush, but my water still is not working in my kitchen, so I gotta go wash it. All right, so this is the best thing I got right now. Um, still kind of getting started here with all my materials and whatnot. But it'll be all right. Alcohol is sterile, so um, did not think about this, <laughs> but it's all I had to do. I had to work with. So as you can see, I'm making it work anyway. Um, I use this method, and I am not pregnant. <laughs> been using it for a couple months now actually ever since I actually discovered it um and yeah um one of those months I kind of had a scare I it was close to my time of ovulation and just kind of went to bed that night and then kind of spaced it and then the next day I was like oh god <laughs> like, and so what did I do I came in here and I ate like two tablespoons full of these seeds <laughs> and then um actually took a bunch of vitamin C when it was close to my period because I actually had a baby in March and my cycle has kind of been messed up ever since then. It's never been the same, um, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting back to it. That was only almost six months ago. So, so yeah. Um, but no, other than that, it's been, it's been good and I'm not pregnant. <laughs> so uh, and trust me, we have a lot of sides. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, all of that goodness in there. Yeah, learn learn from my mistakes. Don't ever do it in a small neck bottle. Goodness, it's worth it though, cause cause this right here. I mean, most most of the most of the liquid is out. So this right here, three drops a day. Um, for even if that's fourteen days, if you have a twenty eight day cycle, even if that's for the first fourteen days. You know, uh, three drops a day, that ain't nothing, you know. So this this will actually make a couple of bottles. I have uh, some 10 milliliter tincture dropper bottles, so I'm going to be putting it in that too. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. <sighs> But yeah, there's there's a lot of amazing things in nature, um, and I'm every day, every single day, I'm always being asked like, "Wow, does this work?" or like doubted that that not me personally, but doubting Mother Nature that there's there's some kind of remedy out there for for you that's natural. And I mean, I don't mean to push my beliefs or anything on anybody, but I personally believe that we come from the earth. You know, we come from Mother Nature. We are a part of nature, and so for everything that naturally afflicts us you know, there, there's going to be a cure that she's provided. So, and I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, religious, but I'm spiritual. And so for the Christians, you know, um, God gave us all seed and fruit bearing plants on earth to use. And so it's, it's a wonder why we don't use them more and even know about them. Cause so many of us know about Queen Anne's, you know, it's, it's here in Arkansas, it's everywhere all the time. And, and I didn't even know about it until recently, until I really started you know, looking into it. But the more I learn, the more I just have so much love and faith for this beautiful earth. It's like, it's so amazing. <laughs> and it's so funny. If you watch my previous video on Comfrey, uh, the, the amazing bone healer, uh, my friend the other day, you know, was 
there's just so much disbelief and like lack of faith in, in our planet, you know, like, oh, you know, I go to the doctor for serious things that herbs can't fix, like, like broken bones and, and bad infections, my friend says. And I said, well, actually, there are, <laughs> there are a lot of herbs that can help you in those areas, especially comfrey and, and oregano oil for one. Um, do not, if, if you're hearing this and, and you think you want to, please, just anything I say, do more, more, more research. I research again and again and again and again, and I know that I kind of lack when it comes to, you know, really getting a point, getting across the 100% of the point I am trying to make. I, I usually kind of summarize it up because I've just got so much to say in my head. I've got so much going on, and so I try to just give it a quick spark note version, you know, summary and people kind of misinterpret it a lot. And so, um, if you ever want to reach out to me, I, since I am still a learner, like let's learn together, you know, tell me what you need and I will see what they have. And I will use my learning what my education so far and apply it. And we will talk, you know, and I, the more information you can give me about your health and everything that, that can help, you know, Oh, son, my sad son. Oh, we just we just went out to eat and he just was going crazy, man. Super sad. I gave him just a little bit of gave him these chamomile teething tablets and he really I don't know, he loves them. He, he sees them, he's like, Oh yeah, let me get those. <laughs> um So I'm almost done here getting this out. It smells like perfume. Like that alcohol and just like that scent. I, I can't explain it. This taste is is not bad. Some people don't like it, but I do not mind it. It's not something I wanna, you know, snack on necessarily, but it is it is a pretty good taste. You know, I don't know if I would cook with it or anything, but but you know, if, if you are going the seed route and you don't want to make tincture or whatever, this is not a bad substitute. So I'm gonna hurry and quick do this because he is sad and I, I tried to do this video earlier and it just didn't didn't work out. Oh, I had an interruption. So here, I'm gonna try to smush that on down in there as best I can because I see the lid got crossed right in here. Of course, my luck. Come on now. Oh, come on. Try not to lose these seeds. All right, cool. All right, lid off. Cheesecloth up, twist, twist, and squeeze. See if we can't. Let me put it back a little bit so you can see. Some more drops out of here. Not much. Just my luck again. Go through all that. Oh, there we go. Good. Ah, oh, such a beautiful color. Such a nice green gold. Oh, more drops. Did you know the alcohol that was really sitting in there, you know, for all that time has really got all the goodness in it, so. <sighs> so, all right, I'm going to put this right here where I put all my little herbs to be composted or put back into the ground anyway. Sometimes, sometimes I don't always compost every single thing necessarily. I might mean, compost it on its own. I don't put everything straight into my compost bin, but depending. So, yeah, here we go. We have this beautiful... Beautiful, beautiful color, and just three drops um, in in your everyday breakfast juice, water, whatever. Three drops a day for three days. First one, first dose, eight hours or less after conceptual sex, fertilizing sex. Um, I'm gonna post some links to a few different researches that have been done and a few different. You know, step-by-step -step instructions, basically where I learned how to do it and everything. Um, so that if you're interested, um, I haven't been using the tincture. I've been chewing the seeds. And so I will see how much this makes. It's probably going to fill two two or maybe three in my little dropper full. So if anyone's interested in this, um, I have these little bottles. And I imagine three drops a day. This should last you probably a year, honestly. We'll see. We'll see how long it takes me. But, but yeah, that's it. And it, as far as I've been trying it, it works and for other women as well. So, 
uh, yeah, I hope you learned something. I hope it's interesting. And if you're interested in trying it, please, like I said, research, research, research. Um, before you pick anything yourself, if you're not 100% sure that it's a plant that you think it is, do not use it. Do not, you know, ingest it or anything because it could be poisonous, especially when you're dealing with this. Um, and yeah, this is not supposed to be a substitute for what your doctor says is best, but I am an informed individual and this is what I choose to use for me. So hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.